Hello, I'm Kendra Little from Red Gates Evangelist Team. And what I'm gonna show you today is an example of how automation in a database DevOps environment can help you improve code quality. And I think this is a really important point because sometimes when we first start learning about DevOps, what we hear about is people talking about tempo or regular deployment speed and things like removing manual steps from deployments. Now, that's all great, but what that can sound like is that we're just gonna push code, any code, no matter how good it is, we're gonna push that code to production as fast as possible. And when it comes to our databases, that can be incredibly risky, right? That's not very appealing to folks who specialize in, in databases. But that is not actually the story of DevOps. With DevOps, yeah, we do want to think about tempo and about pushing small groups of changes regularly, but we also want to think about stability and code quality just as much. We want to find ways that automation can help us prove that our code is valid, that it's stable, that it's good code, and we want to find flaws in our code as early as we can. It's not that we're never going to fail. We want to, as much as possible when we're going to fail, fail fast, ideally well before that code ever comes close to any production environment. And tooling can help set us up for success for that. So I'm going to show you an example of how automation with things like branch policies for our source control can help do that for your database code. Today I'll be doing a demo with Redgate's SQL change automation tools, for both for source control as well as for validating our code and automating deployments of our code. And I'll be showing this with the orchestration tools involved in Azure DevOps here. So I have an Azure uh, DevOps environment set up. It's named RG Demos. And in this, I have created a project named Pubs. Pubs is a very classic sample database provided by Microsoft under the MIT license. And I've uh, created a Pubs database, checked it into source control, and I've already been pushing some uh, changes through my, my pipeline here. And I'll, I'll show you a little bit about what's going on. Now let's go ahead and go into the repo in this project. Here's where I've got my source control. And the magic is set up in the repository settings. So the way I'm, it's a little tricky to navigate to the build policy or the branch policy rather. Uh, there may be a more straightforward way than I'm doing it, but the way I do it is I go to my repo and I go into a manage repositories there. And now that my repository is open, I can expand it in terms of the settings is open and I can look at the branches here because this is a policy set on a specific branch. In particular, I have set this policy on my master branch. Once I click on master, I can see that for this branch, I now can see, hey, are there any branch policies? And I can navigate to the branch policy there. Now, what does a branch policy do? Well, luckily enough, we've got a little explanation here. The, one of the coolest thing here is that it enforces the use of pull requests when updating the branch. I'm using Git for my source control, which is actually what Microsoft recommends when using Azure DevOps. So what does this mean functionally? This means that we don't want people just updating this branch directly, right? We're using this branch for some purpose so that we want to protect it so that we have some validation on code going into this branch. So the way this mean, works is that if I'm a developer working on a feature, I am going to create a branch to do my work and experimentation in. I'm going to associate that branch with a database that just I have access to because I don't want to mess up other people who may be working on totally different features than me, right? I want a private workspace. I'm gonna work on my feature until I'm ready. And when I want my code to be reviewed, when I'm ready to merge my code back in, I'm gonna create a pull request. And I want that pull request to be reviewed. So like, is this acceptable to merge into that branch? So this means, like part of what this uh, policy does is it says, first of all, just I'm not going to let people update the branch directly. They have to use pull requests. But also, I can use automation with this branch. And um, I'm doing this with the master branch. You could do this with, depending on your branching strategy, you could do this with other branches, right? I'm keeping it real simple. The cool thing that I've set up here is I have added a build policy. 
And my build policy means that when people do a pull request, I can say, I want automation to kick in. And my automation is going to start with running a build. So I've already set up a policy here. We can see under the build pipeline here that I've already created this, and this is enabled. If I click edit here, we can look a little bit at what this is. There's a drop down here where I have a build pipeline already set up. And what that build pipeline does is it runs SQL change automations build against my database code. This validates that my code compiles correctly from source, that it all works, that all dependencies are met. And okay, like I'm a DBA, like I've been a DBA for years and more than once I have absolutely received scripts for deployment that did not compile properly. Right. And these were from smart people, too. It's not like these were, you know, ignorant developers or inexperienced developers. It was simply people being rushed. Right. And the fact that something like this wasn't in place and that a review wasn't in place for each change. Right. So this is helping protect against that. And it even does more than this. So basically what I've said is that every time someone does a pull request for this branch, I want you to automatically run this build and make sure this code compiles. Right, so let's go out. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of here because I don't need to change that. We'll take a look in my pipelines at what that build is. So we can see here pubs build policy automation. I've named it that just to make it real obvious what it is. The last time it was actually run in here was when I actually merged in a pull request. And of course my commit comments are always the best, but let's take a look at this in action for real. So I'm gonna go into Visual Studio with SQL change automation right now, we actually have um, in beta the ability to work with this same project in SQL Server Management Studio, but I have gone to the dark side and I actually enjoy working in Visual Studio now. So we're actually gonna work in Visual Studio. Right now, I am in the master branch. And before I create another branch, I am just gonna go ahead and make sure I have the everything, I have the latest from the master branch. And I do, the repository is already up to date. There are no changes to pull. So I'm gonna click down here and I'm gonna go ahead and say that I want to go ahead and create a new branch to do some work in. What is my branch gonna be named? Let's just name it feature demo, right? This is a fantastic name. I am, I am unfortunately terrible at naming things. I'm gonna go ahead and check out the branch, meaning, hey, I, I'm creating this branch and I wanna go ahead and do some work in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and create my branch there. And Visual Studio fixes me up. We can validate in our bottom right hand corner down here that in fact, I am now in the feature demo branch and I'm doing some work. So I'm gonna go into my solution explorer and I, like I said, I already have SQL change automation all set up for pubs. And let's say I wanna change one of the stored procedures in this case. So I've opened up in my programmable objects, I've opened up this uh, stored procedure here. Let's get a little window space here. And we can see that not everything is perfect in here. We've got some code validation kicking in via SQL prompt and it's saying, well, you didn't include the procedure body with begin and end. So let's let's fix up some of the things that it's telling us about there. Let's do begin and there. And oh, uh, we've also got a little uh, complaint about titles. It's like, yeah, you didn't specify the schema name. Let's go ahead and specify the schema name for titles, fix that up. And then maybe I just want to, I mean, this... This is not a great procedure, but I just did a reformatting there with control K, control Y for SQL prompt. And I went ahead and just reformatted it. It's not so happy about our use of the money data type. <laughs> There's other things like that, but we're going to go ahead and uh, this is just the limit of the changes we're going to do for now. So very small refactoring changes because the point of what we really want to see is this build automation in this demo. So I have made a change and I can see down here that I have one change that I've made. So sure enough, I'm going to go ahead and uh, save my changes to this item. And now when I see here, when I, what have I changed? Well, I have changed reptq3.sql. When I go back into my solution explorer, I can also see, yeah, something's been happening here, right? So I want to go ahead and commit that change. Um, I have done a small refactor on this. I'm going to go ahead and commit all. And now I need to, I'm using, you know, get, I have my local copy updated. 
Azure DevOps doesn't know anything about this now. So I'm going to go ahead and push this up to Azure DevOps. Now, I didn't, this is my first push. Visual Studio allows me to just do this push after I've committed the change. It'll go ahead and push the branch up to Azure DevOps along with my commit in it. Now, when I go back into Azure DevOps and I'm looking at pubs here, and let's go back into the repo here, I can see a very helpful little message here at the top. It's very convenient and nice of it. It's like, by the way, you just updated this branch right now. If you're ready to merge this branch in, perhaps you would like to create a pull request. Oh, well, I don't mind if I do. Let's go ahead and create a pull request. And it's even polite enough to take my not very good commit message and make it the title of my pull request. And we're going to go ahead and create the pull request because what we really want to see is the automatic things that I have set up to happen after this. Now we can see here in the top right here, it says required pull request of build policy for master is in progress. Let's go ahead and click on that and we can actually watch. This is the build pipeline I have set up that is running a build against my code. As soon as I do this pull request, it's gonna go ahead and validate that code. So if I go ahead and click in this agent job one, I can see that build my SQL uh, change automation project is in process. Schema validation has been successful. It's rolling through there. It's exported my build artifact. Things are good, right? Successful build, but wait. There's more. This, this is kind of a blender demo. So we're going to go back here and we're going to go back and look at my pull request. And I'm just getting back to my pull request here with the back button. Let's go ahead and, well, let's, yeah, here we go. Oh, I was on the page. I just refreshed and, and now I have to go back in. What I wanted to show you is there's even more magic you can do. It's not just that, yes, I mean, it's cool that you can build your code, but look down here under status, I now have something based on a pull request trigger that's in process. If we click into here, I have a release pipeline set up and this is running something called release 34. The way that I have this pipeline set up, if I go here and just edit the pipeline to look at the, the pipeline, on the pipeline itself, here's where we can see the triggers, right? What causes this pipeline to run? If I click on this trigger here, notice that I have a pull request trigger set up. And it says every time a new version of the selected artifact, that means if the, you know, the build succeeds, Every time I do a pull request, it's going to automatically run that build job. And if that build succeeds as part of a pull request workflow, it is now going to run this release pipeline. And what I've done in this pipeline is I've set up a few tasks using our Redgate tools. I have a process, and this is in my case, kind of an imaginary process, but we have real customers who are doing this, right? So it is a real world thing that people are doing. I've I've kind of faked it out because the, I'm gonna let you in on a secret, there is no real pubs development team. <laughs> but imagine that on a nightly basis, I sweep in backups from my production pubs database. I create an image of that using Redgate SQL provision, and I automatically apply masking so that the sensitive data of pubs customers is not going to be leaked into all of my dev environments. If I'm doing that on a nightly basis or even a weekly basis, depending on what your needs are, maybe a monthly basis, depending on how often you actually release, but nightly or weekly generally makes more sense, right? What I can do during this is I can say every time a pull request happens, I want to do a build and validate that that build works, but I want to do more. I want to go ahead and clone off a new database that's a copy of masked data of recent production. I want to create a release artifact using SQL change automation. What a release artifact does is it says, okay, I'm looking at the code you want to deploy and I'm looking at that database and I'm figuring out what do I need to do to bring that database to the, the present state of um, how you have your SQL change autom automation project. And then I want to go ahead and deploy to that. So what this means is, let's go ahead and, and go back here and look at our, our pipeline here. What this means is that the, and if I, let's go ahead and see if our pipeline was successful. Um, in fact, it was successful there on release four. 
Going back now to my pull request, essentially what it's done is it's created an environment they can do a really cool, really valid review in. So I've actually gone ahead and created this on the same SQL server where I'm doing, yeah, this is all on my laptop except for the Azure DevOps bit. I can restore my databases. Note my database is named here, right? Can restore my databases. And we can see now that, in fact, on my databases, hey, look, pubs release 38 is now there. I've used a variable to name this with the release number. There's all sorts of different ways you could name this database. But if I go into the programmability here and I look at the stored procedures and I open up this stored procedure that I've just edited, I can see that, in fact, the formatting changes that I made here, the begin, the end, the uh, schema name in there, those are all present and were included in the deployment. So the reviewer could do all sorts of things to make sure that this code actually works while reviewing the change. They aren't stuck just looking at the changes in the SQL script. They can run the procedures. They can see what indexes are used. They can hook this up with the application and actually test things through the UI all before they even accept the code to be merged into that branch, right? There's even more things that we can do with things like automated testing and the like. But this helps us, this kind of automation, I think it's very, very exciting because it helps us for database changes do the kind of early validation that traditionally people have only been able to do for application level changes. So uh, hooking in these tools into orchestration and looking at things like branch policies and your automation options, absolutely not just about the speed of deployment, but very much about the ability to improve code quality as well in a DevOps world. Thanks for joining me for this video. I'm Kendra from Redgate's Evangelist team. I'll see you in another video soon. Bye folks.